Hello everyone, my name is Jordan and welcome to another review. Today I'm really excited to show you guys this awesome engine that I just got on my birthday. Now, ever since November, because I wanted to get this train on my Christmas, I've absolutely loved this engine. Now, since I did not get it on my Christmas, I got it on my birthday and I'm absolutely happy with it. It runs perfect, the details are awesome, the sounds are awesome, it's just a perfect engine to have and I definitely recommend getting one of these. So today I'm going to be reviewing the MTH Premier Electromotive SD70 ACE Demonstrator. Now before we get further into the review, I want to go ahead and tell you guys what a Demonstrator Locomotive is. So a Demonstrator Locomotive is a prototype locomotive that is made by the manufacturer um, before the actual production locomotives are actually built and sent out to the railroads. This model you see here is the prototype locomotive of the SD70 before actual railroads um, actually got these types of engines. Alright, so today in this review, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys a closer look of all the detail around the engine, starting off with the front, top, back, and then the sides. Now before we get further into the review, I want to go ahead and show you guys all the features that is included in this engine. So the features in this engine is intricately detailed ABS body, a die cast truck sides, pilots, and fuel tank, a colorful paint scheme, a metal chassis, metal handrails and decorative horn, two hand painted crew figures, directionally controlled headlights, metal wheels, axles, and gears, two remotely controlled protocouplers, two precision flywheel pill motors, there is a local motor speed control, lighted cab interior, illuminated number boards, operating ditch lights, operating smoke unit, proto scale 323 rail to 2 rail conversion capable, proto sound 3.0 with a digital command system featuring freight yard porter effects. The unit measures 18 and a half inches by 2, 5, 8 inches by 4 inches and then this engine operates on 036 curves minimum. Now there's two versions of this engine. This one that you see here is the high wheels um, version. Uh, now there's another version of this engine which is the scale version. Now um, I'm not 100% sure what that is for but I believe it is for two rail operation. Alright so now we got over the features and what's included in this engine. Now it's going to go ahead and start off with the detail. Now before we start off with the detail, I want to go ahead and show you guys the box that you are included when you get this engine. So as you can see, the en or the box that you get in the engine um, is the purple MTH box. You have the, of course, you have the steam engine logo that MTH normally has on Premier engines, and then of course these are all the features. You can go ahead and pause the video and check it out. So as you can see, it's an SD70 ACE diesel engine. It's a really nice big box to keep your engine safe. And as you can see, it is bigger than the engine because you got to keep it safe because, of course, there's foam inside to keep your engine safe. And then, of course, is your manual to give you all the stuff that you can do with your engine, like lubrication, um, button codes if you decide to run your engine conventionally. Um, it's just a really good little manual to let you know the features and the ways you can keep this or, or to do maintenance on your engine it's a really good little you know, manual now I found out or or a rumor that's been going around is that MTH has now been um, on their brand brand new engines MTH engines they do not come with manuals I believe they um, I believe people have been saying that you have to go on the MTH website to look up the manual to your engine. Now, I don't know if that's completely true, but to one of, my, one of the friends of mine told me that they do not do that anymore. Alright, so let's go ahead and go to the review table so we can get a closer look of all the details on this engine. Alright, so we're now at the review table. Um, so let's go ahead and start off with the front and the engine. And then after we get to the front of the engine, we'll take a look at the top, back, and the sides, and then the bottom. Alright, so let's start off with the front. 
Alright, so starting off with the pilot. First off on the pilot, you have, of course, MTH's protocoupler. This can be fired from the DCS remote, or you can actually um, fire the coupler conventionally. Alright, so right behind the coupler, you have a detachable snowplow. Now, when you get this engine out of the box, the engine does not have the snowplow because it is actually safely uh, packaged in a little bag because, of course, they have to keep MTH is nice enough to keep it safe so it doesn't get damaged or bent because, of course, if it's being delivered to your house or your local train store, they got to keep it safe. So it's a really nice play by MTH, and they've done that to their engines for a, lot, uh, for a long time. Now, when you find the snowplow in the little bag, the inside of the bag with the snowplow is there two there's two little screws, and um you would screw and those two screws will go in the bottom of the engine, so it can stay nice and tight on your pilot. Now behind the snowplow, you have some nice separately applied MU hoses all along back right here, and then right down over there. Above the snowplow and MU hoses, you have a cut bar right here. This does move, but since it's right behind the snowplow, it's actually stuck in one position. As we get to the platform right here, you have some nice wiring detail. Um, I've never seen this on any other MTH engine except for this one, so it looks really nice. And especially it looks nice because there's a lot, because of course, this is prototypical because a lot of engines like the SD70 or other engines have these little um, hoses, right, or wiring or hoses on the front. Now as we get to the platform, right, as you can see a little closely, it does have the safety tread on it. It looks really nice. Um, right here we have the two operational ditch lights right here. Um, when, the, when you're about to move the engine, these do light up as you, uh, when you're just about to move the engine. It looks really nice. And it's definitely prototypical because when you're when the engine is in idle or stopped moving, there's no point of having ditch lights on. So it's definitely really prototypical, and MTH has done that on a lot of their engines as well. Also, when you blow the horn, the the ditch lights will do a pattern just like that, uh, as I'm trying to show you, and it does that of course uh, because you blew the horn. So. Whenever you blow the horn, the ditch lights will act, um, will do that pattern, and it's definitely prototypical because a lot of, because of course, engines do that in real life as well. Of course, on the platform you have a bunch of handrails all over the place on the front, and then right in the middle you have a little metal safety chain right in the middle of the engine. As we get to the nose of the engine, if you look closely down here, you can actually see like a little warning label right there and also one on the other side so so we get to the nose we're going to first start off on the left side and then we get to the right side so starting off on the left side you have a grab iron right here and then a handrail right there that's a nice molded in detail along the bottom over here right here if you look closely this is actually a opening door so um before we get to the opening door feature let's go ahead and check out some of the detail so on the bottom of the door, you have two little labels right here. This one's letting you know that there's tools and there's tools in there. And then right here is, of course, the fire extinguisher label. Right here is a separately applied uh, door handle. As you can see, it does move. As we get to the top of the door, right here, you have, of course, the EMD logo looking right on the door. And then here you go. I'm going to show you guys the opening door feature. As you can see, it opens just like that. Now, the thing is that I don't really like about the feature is, is that if you look inside, you can see the whole part of the engine because the whole nose is hollow. So you can see right here, there's like the wires, and then you can see the back of the engine back all over there. I kind of don't like that the MTH didn't do any detail, or actually like cover it up and put at least some detail there, but it kind of just. So you open it and you just see a bunch of wires. I don't really like that, but at least you have this cool little feature. Now, in order to close the door, at least with my engine, is I would actually push the door handle down, and then I can actually close the engine. That's pretty cool. Now, as we get to the middle of the engine, right here, of course, you have the operational headlight. Uh, when you start up the engine, um, 
the headlight is dim, but when you're about to move the engine, just like the ditch lights, where no differently, the headlight actually gets a lot more brighter, and then, um, it'll be nice and bright when you start moving the engine. And as you get to the right side of the engine, right here, all along onto the, from the bottom to the top of the nose, you have four separately applied drive irons. Right here, if you look closely, this says, the next generation of progress right on the nose. That's pretty cool. And it does say that on the engine. And then, of course, on the other side of the engine, there's another separately applied grab iron. Now, starting off with the top of the nose, right here you have another grab iron. This goes along with the other grab irons on the right side of the nose. Right here you have another grab iron because of the grab iron right here on the nose on the left side. And then on both sides, right here and here, these are two sand caps right there and there. And then back here you have two more grab irons on each side. And then as we get to the no uh, to the cab, as you can see, there's two plastic windows there and there. And then right above the windows, you have four separately applied windshield wipers. Above the windshield wipers, you have two grab irons on each side. Right here, you have operational number boards. These do light up when you start up the engine. And as you can see, this is a locomotive 1202. Now, if you look closely inside the cab, you can see two hand painted crew figures there and there. Alright, so that takes care of the front. Now let's go ahead and take a look on the top of the engine. Starting off with the top, right here we're going to first start off with the cab. Right here you have, I believe this is an air conditioning unit, or this is an antenna. I'm not 100% sure of what it is, but if you do exactly know what that piece is, you can let me know in the comments down below. As we get closer to the middle of the engine, right here you have some nice molded in detail all along right here. And right here you have a nodal vent right here. And then this vent right here is of course the operational smoke unit. Of course, to load smoke unit or uh, smoke fluid into the unit, all you have to do is just pour smoke fluid directly down the stack. Now, there's a thing that's connected to the smoke unit that's in the back of the engine that we'll get to it in just a moment. Right behind the smoke unit, right here, of course, you have the separately applied horn. If you're curious what this type of horn is, this is a Nathan Airtime K5 LLA. As you have four horns facing the front of the engine, and then one giant horn facing the back of the engine. Here's a better look at the back of the horn, and here's a better look of the front of the horn. Alright, so now we're at the back of the engine. This is the cooling unit, this whole giant piece right here. Um, now before I show you anything else, I want to go ahead and show you guys. Or There's a little feature of the back of the engine right here, but before we can see that, I want to go ahead and show you guys the detail. So as you can see, this whole piece sticks out to the side, right there, and also on the other side as well. And as you can see, there's no left wings right there and there. I believe those are. And then as we get to the top, you have two fa giant fans right there and there. And then there's no hoses or wires on the side of the fans, as you can see. And then of course, there's a bunch of little rivets along the top of the in you know, the top of the cooling unit. Now here is the most biggest part of this, you know, the, this back of the part of the engine. This part actually comes out just like that. Uh, and as you can see, the vents are see-through on this engine, which is really nice. And here, here we go with a bunch of stuff that I need to go over. So let's first start off with this area of the engine. So right here, you have the switch for the 3 rail to 2 rail conversion. I do apologize, the switch is actually for... Switching it from DCC to DCS controlling, and then this switch is actually for the two rail to three rail operation. Now, if you're converting this engine to two rail operation, what you would do is you would flip the switch to DCC and then two rail because, as of course, if you're using a different transformer or different remote or command system to operate your engine in DCC you would actually flip it to DCC because DCC is for two rail engines and then of course these two knobs this one right here is for the volume of the smoke so for example if your engine is putting out too much smoke or your engine is putting too little of smoke um, you would just turn the dial up 
or down as much as you want to get the most out of your smoking area. Or if you want it completely off, you will turn it all the way down to have it off. But of course, if you have the DCS command system, um, you don't need to use these knobs because you can just do it from your remote. And then, of course, this knob over here is for the volume control. For example, if your engine is too loud or too quiet, you can just turn it up or turn it down. But of course, you can you can do that using your DCS or DCC remote. Now, as so we get back here, if you look right here, this is the flywheel motor right here. As you can see, this black and white piece right here, this is actually the flywheel. Now, there's two little wires. That's kind of hard to get to. I'll get it out right now. Um, there's these two little wires that are in the engine. Now I'm pretty. Now I'm not a hundred percent sure what these are for. There you go. So these, there's these two little wires. Um, and these two little connectors. Now I'm not a hundred percent sure what these are for. I don't know if it's for two rail operation or anything, but it's inside of the engine, and I do not know why it's like that. Or what it's for so if you do know what this these two node wires are for you can let me know in the comments down below but for me I do not know what these nodal wires are for and then right on the engine or on the edge of the engine right here you have a magnet two magnets on each side as you can see right there and there and I'll get to these two magnets in just a second all right so let's go and get to the cooling unit for a second now what's really cool about these fans is that these fan blades are actually movable so if you look closely you can actually move these fan blades with your finger just like that it's pretty cool just like that if you look through the fan you can see the fan blades moving just like that it's a really cool little feature but really nice little feature anyway so next to the fans there's these two nylon magnets right here. Now, like what I said earlier, there was two magnets right there and there. Now, what those are actually for? Those are actually for, um, for um, having the piece um, stuck onto the engine and not coming off so easily. So what you would do is you would put your engine, or put the piece back on the engine just like that. And then it would actually just stick right on, uh, so it does not leave the engine, just like that. Now, when you have it on the engine, make sure you kind of make sure that it's sealed tight. Now, behind the main cooling unit, right here, you have another fan, but this one's actually silver. All right, so that takes care of the top of the engine. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the back. As we get to the back of the engine, we're first going to start off with the middle. So, in the middle... You have an operational backup light. This can be, of course, operating when you switch the direction of the engine. Um, now just like the front headlight, um, when you have the engine at idle, um, this headlight or backup light will be dim. But when you're about to move the engine, the backup light will get much brighter before you start moving the engine. Now below the headlight, you have these two vents right there and there. Um, and as you can see, it goes with the paint scheme. As you can see, the stripe goes right through it, and just like the other one as well. well. Now, what's kind of cool about the vents is that it looks like a mirror, just like that. As you can see, it's like really shining. It's kind of cool. Now, starting on the left, as you can see, there's a bunch of grab irons all over the bottom, or from the top all the way down to the bottom. Between the between the grab irons right here, you have, the, of course, the locomotive number, 1202, as well as the other side. Right next to the 1202 is another side cap, and then right here is a handrail. Now, onto the other side, right here, of course, you have the 1202, like I mentioned just a, just a second ago. Another sand cap, and then a handrail right there. Now, as we get to the platform, as you can see, it still has the safety, you know, the safety tread on it, and then... All over the both sides, you have the handrails all over on both sides, and then right here you have the safety chain right there. Now, as we get to the pilot on the back, right here we have the wiring just like the front, and then right here, of course, you have MCH's protocoupler 
just like the front of course this could be fired using the DCS remote or you can use it and uh, you can fire it doing it conventional of course right here you have the cup bar as you can see there's three pieces to it there's one right there one right there and then there's this null piece right here now as we can see the pilot again as you can hear see right here these are uh, separately applied MU hoses as you can see look excellent and then there's two letters on each side there's an E right there and there's an F right there alright so that takes care of the back now it's going to go ahead and take a look at the side alright so as we get to the first side of the engine as you can see right here there's on the er, on the front of the engine right here there's another warning label right there and then here are the steps right there as we get to the nose as you can see right there there's a letter no er, there's a letter F letting you know that this is the front of the engine as we get to the cab area of the engine right here you have the builder's plate and then right here we have a molding and hatch right there as we get to the top of the cab as you can see you have the number again 1202 and then as we get to the cab as you can see we have four or three plastic windows and then right here there's a little mirror of course, this is the sunshade, and then right here is one of the cab figures right there. And what's really cool is that there's only three windows, and then when there's the cab figure right there, there's no window. That's pretty cool. As we get behind the cab, we have another opening door right here. Now, um, I've never actually opened this door before, but I'm sure this does open up because the hinges look like they can actually open up. Um, now this one's actually hard to get to because it's like in a corner where you, where the the door actually opens. So I kind of so I never actually opened it, but it's kind of well, you kind of have a hard time trying to open it at least for me because it's in right and the door handle is like right in the corner, so I can't really open it. But anyway, on the door there's a plastic. Window right there, and then right above the window is a separately applied windshield wiper. As you can see right here, this is a separately applied door handle. And then right there is a label letting you know that there's a fire extinguisher in the cab. Right here, there's another label right there, a warning label. As we get to the side, as you can see, this is a, another door right here. Now, this one does not open, but I can definitely see why MTH did that because. You do not want to see the electronics in the engine because there's a bunch of wires and motors and so forth. So, good play by MTH, but it still looks nice. As you can see on the door, there's another warning label right there, and then a molten and door handle. Below the door, you have this little box right here. I forgot what this part was called, but as you can see, there are handrails going along on the top of it, and then it goes more all the way to the back of the engine. As you can see, there's four vents right there and there, and then there's two little labels right there and there. Now behind this little box right here, there's two little steps that go along to the bottom, the main platform. Now right here, you have a see-through vent. As I put my camera right here, as you can see, you can see right through to the other vent right here. As you can see, my finger is right there. Right here, you have another molding and door. Just like this, and the other one that you see over here is molded in because you do not want to see the electronics inside of the engine. As you can see, there's a molded in door handle right there, hinges, and then some warning labels on the door once again. Now, as you can see, the labels are actually, um, you can actually see what they actually say, which is a really nice touch. As we get to the middle part of the engine, we have a lot to go over with. As you can see, all along the middle of the engine, you have a bunch of hatches. And then, as you can see, all along the bottom, you have a bunch of warning labels all over there. And then right here, of course, you have, in big letters, Electromotive. And then right below the Electromotive logo, that says the next generation of progress. Now, I'm going to pause right here. I want to go ahead and um, tell you guys my opinion of um, EMD putting the next generation of progress on their engines. Now, I do say that that's, pretty, that's a really cool slogan that electromotive has it's because the reason i say that is because this is like the net and i think what they're trying to say by having that type of slogan is saying like this is the next 
and this is the next engine that or, and the progress that we made that's pretty that's a really cool slogan now as you can see on the top you can see the horn right there the, K, the k5 lla by nathan airtime and then we get to the back of the engine and this is a really really crazy part of the engine because there's a lot to go over with as you can see we have a, a lot more hatches all along the back and then as you can see what's really cool about the back in the back part right here over here as you can see there's a bunch of warning labels all over the cool or all over the bottom of the cooling unit and then right here in the paint scheme it says SD70 ACE to let you know what type of engine this is right here you have a brake wheel with a warning labels right there and there now as we get to the cooling unit as when I said earlier the vents are see through as you can see my hand you can see my hand on the other side now what's really cool about the the cooling unit is that there's actually left rings right there, and there's one over here as well. Now, as we get to the back of the engine, as you can see, there's two vents right there, the two labels right uh, under it, and then right here you have the infamous giant vent in the back. As you can see, it's also see-through. You can see my finger on the other side. As you get to the first axle of the engine, uh, you have no light, so you can see a little bit better because the because the axle is black, so you can't really see it. So I got a no light, so you can actually see it better. Anyway, so as you can see, the the axles look really nice. As you can see, there's some separately applied details for the brakes right there and there. And then, as you can see, here is our... Here. You can see the wheels right there and there. And then you can see a bunch of nice die-cast details all, o all over the axles. And it looks absolutely awesome. Now, there's this one detail that's really hard to get to, and that is the bell. There's actually a little bell right here, as you, if you look closely. Put the camera closer so you can actually see the bell. It's just right there. That's a really cool little feature. Alright, so here's the fuel tank of the engine. As you can see right here and there, these are the two air tanks on the fuel tank. And then right here, there's this little fuel meter letting you know how much fuel is in your tank. And then right here, there's some nice hand painted details all over here. And this is actually the area where you would actually put the fuel in. Because right here, there's actually... I do apologize for that noise, that was actually my clock. But anyway, if you look right here, there's a little fuel tank logo. As you can see, these are like the... No Just like what your car would... No, like, no logo that would... um. The lo the no logo that would light up in your car, letting you know that you need to f uh, fill up your car um, for your for your car up with gas. That it looks, it definitely reminds me um, of the car, letting you know that you need to fill uh, fill your car up with gas, just like a normal gas, uh, just like normal gas machine. And here's a look at the other axle. As you can see, there's more simply applied pieces right here and also here as well for the brakes as well and it looks just like the other axle as well all right so that takes care of the first side now let's go ahead and take a look at the other side all right guys so this is going to do for part one of the review i do apologize that i have to do it in two parts but there's a lot of more details that i really want to show you guys and of course i would have to run the engine as well um now the, the thing that i don't like about the camera that i've course I'm using is my phone is that there's a ma uh, there's a maximum recording uh, recording time limit so I do apologize about that but anyway this concludes part one of the review I hope you guys enjoyed it um, the second part will be finishing off this side and then the bottom and then we'll run the engine so that concludes part one uh, stay tuned for part two and I'll see you guys in part two so thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in part two